Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're gonna talk about spectrometer. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand, like same way you have to understand atom to understand our world because it's a fundamental building block of our world. Same goes for well photons or light, meaning it is a fundamental block of our reality, especially whenever you are talking about energy. You have to understand this puppy. And our eyes have very low bit depth around it. For example, our eyes can see color. So you will understand that we can see, you know, our visible spectrum. Yes and no. I mean, like we can see color. We can perceive our world and we are like very good at it. However, we do have a consequence that we cannot look into the spectra quote-unquote signature because every photon waves that are emitted from a, especially from a bulk emission from a let's say a light source like daylight incandescent light fluorescent lamp halogen lamp cool led white LED. we can't actually break it down because like all we can see is like some sort of color it's like oh you know fluorescent is a bit blue we will not be able to say hey it does not have green spike or uh, we'll not be able to look into a halogen and be like hey it's emitting too much uh, infrared yeah again we will start to feel it but you have to wait for infrared to actually react to you to understand that you won't be able to say hey uh, you Know, cool white it has very high blue spike we can see light we can perceive it but we can't perceive the depths of it so there is this whole world of signature that is embedded into photons that we need to see and every element in the periodic table has an emission spectra so you can understand this puppy is important <clears throat> so a spectrometer can, uh, a specific device built for one purpose and one purpose only to see this signature meaning if you are saying hydrogen is emitting an energy how would you know you have to look at its spectra same goes for sodium we have sodium lamps same goes for other things also mercury and things of that nature so this is one of the things and be mindful we are talking about specifically optical spectrum but it's not necessary that we only focus on that because electromagnetic spectrum is huge meaning it goes as tiny as a gamma rays which is like around the size of an atomic nuclei meaning a proton neutron and uh, then we go to up that is x-ray that is like size of an atom then we go even up that is size of a molecules we are talking about ultraviolet then we come start to go into like you know microbial life very small microbial life that is bacterial life form then we go even big that is like you know signs of uh, infrared which we can feel uh, like it does uh, have a wavelength that like you can see with your open eye as in like pinpoint then we have uh, basically microwave which which has like really huge range so the small range goes to uh, like a house fly basically a uh, fly to human size and and long radio waves well they go very long as in like building size kind of long so you get that point like there is a lot of spectrum so whenever somebody is talking about visible spectra survey it does not mean it has to stop here like you can still study things in uh, ultraviolet you can still study things in x-ray gamma rays we really have a hard time building a sensor that can do this puppy properly x-ray we are like we're achieving some success but like ultraviolet we got this uh, infrared we got this visible we got this so any quality instrument right now can like literally see more than uh, our eyes can see basically we can see more of infrared and bit of ultraviolet also so we have a much wider window so in terms of signature we can see it and just because signature happens to line up in visible spectrum does not mean it's only limited to that it may have some specific pattern in x-ray or gamma ray your instrument if it can't see does not mean it's not there so be very mindful of that so that's why we have to build this specific tool now there are two main types of it uh, you have to understand where this photons coming from in the first place you have to understand that uh, if you are talking about black body radiation meaning if something is there and it's gg hot meaning ludicrously hot meaning nuclear reactor kind of hot then it gives off a smooth spectra meaning you don't have to worry about it the output is constant spectrum meaning everything red blue green is properly mixed everything is smooth there is no spikes nothing no hoo-ha everything is smooth like incandescent bulb or halogen bulb now that's awesome but here's the uh, generally you will a uh, black body radiation it can be like that but no black body exists in a vacuum you may like hey wait a minute star exists in the vacuum but star also has an atmosphere of its own and then not to mention you are in, also inside an atmospheric bubble so a black body radiation that is like completely stripped it does not exist so that is one thing you have to understand so when you are talking about black body radiation like even a lamp let's say incandescent lamp it's not sealed in a vacuum it does have argon or it may have some other inert gas it will have that signature uh, you know bonded to it because you will never get that continuous spectrum because there are always something that will take something away and when you are talking about emitting light for example leds cfls incandescent or things of that nature you are also talking about elements those elements basically for example <clears throat> if you are talking in gaseous or neon signs they have a unique signature to them because every element that emits sign light it cannot just do yolo on it unless it's black body radiation when it's not black body meaning like led you are pumping energy in terms of a voltage potential then it has to dump that energy so that dumping of that energy basically electrical energy into photon energy will never happen like a smooth continuous system it will always happen as an emission spectrum 
and both of these two things are very separate these are the only sources of light and when you want to study optical absorption spectrum meaning you when you are looking at like i have a continuous emission now i'm looking at what's missing basically let's say you have you know for a fact that sun's surface is creating gg amounts of smooth continuous spectrum okay awesome but here's the, when you're looking it through a spectrograph you're finding hey wait, there are way too many black lines why now you have to study what those black lines represent which elements they represent so that's one of uh way one way and that's what we call absorption spectrum study basically optical absorption spectrometers these are specific tools built for finding what's missing now uh, let's say you're talking about a, a lab which is building lasers which are building light sources pump diodes things of that nature now you have to study on emission spectrum so in this point you are looking how the energy is being dumped one format or the another now at that point in time what's there you, you will uh, like basically our eyes that's why i specified our eyes are really not that good in terms of death wise because if it was really good we will hate sodium lamps but again we do use it why because to our eyes tries to, it's best to adjust it and we can still see in it but like if you look it through a spectrograph you'll find like it only has like two yellow lines done go home sweet dreams it is like really missing it does miss a lot of information and you can ask any photographer when they are working with this they hate the light output of that because of that reason because it has only emission in very narrow band same goes with cfl that's why people hate cfl uh, that emission is really not that good leds again led uh, they have tried to find a way because led itself is monochromatic it only emits blue and then that blue uh, when you're emitting that you emit boatload of it then you send it to phosphor and phosphor tones it down to like you know lower energy spectrum basically a, a voltage step down transformer so it has a blue spike and then a bit of smooth you know yellow and green so it does work so you have to understand there are two ways if you're looking at what is there you are looking at emission spectrum if you're looking at what's missing you are looking at absorption spectrum and both will give you a complete picture and be mindful emission as uh, spectrum and absorption spectrum is exactly the same they are just negative of each other be mindful same goes with every element sodium nitrogen hydrogen oxygen every element in the periodic table they will have the same emission and absorption spectrum meaning one is negative of the other now why is that now this goes to very deep level complex level of quantum physics and energy levels and all that just but think of it this way each element has an atom and that atom has a discrete energy states of electrons basically electron shell and how it reacts to photon incoming photon energies that defines how it's gonna absorb it because again a other spectrum can apparently just go through it and at right frequency basically it starts to quote unquote resonate basically it will start absorbing it now it absorbed it what happens it goes into higher energy state so what it does it tries to go down to a lower energy state now how does it do that it starts to dump energy in discrete energy levels those levels define the frequency of the light that is the emission spectrum it is unique to every element now be mindful it is unique but does not mean it's not overlapping you may find multiple elements in periodic table especially when you start to go to heavier elements like around carbon and all that jazz you'll find their spectrum starts to overlap with like let's say oxygen and carbon like okay they have their unique fingerprint but it starts to like uh overlap like other things are super easy especially when you're talking about light elements uh, they're super easy to understand when you're talking about heavy elements they start to frequency starts to overlap so that's supposed to be like that absorption spectrum now again this is a completely different level of science where you have to actually understand is like how photon is interacting with electron how electron is going to higher electron shell then it's dumping that energy coming down there's a whole different level to that but that's the reason why each element has its own unique signature and uh, emission spectrum and absorption spectrum, they are just neg uh, same thing just negative of each other meaning emission you will emit things that you will absorb when somebody is giving you that's the whole thing <clears throat> so there are two types if you're looking at what is being produced you're looking at emission spectrum if you're looking at what is removed you're looking at absorption spectrum every element is unique now how this sort of equipment is built well uh, you have a basically light input source whatever they generally people try to use fiber optics because fiber optics does allow you to have a lot of attenuation in the signal removes a lot of polarization it's, it's like a mixing ball it removes uh, does very good mixing and you can just point it to whatever you want you want uh, like and one led you just point to it another led you point to it growing and people who deal with uh, basically a lot of farming with artificial lighting they spend boatload of money into this so you have an input light source then you have a very narrow slit basically whatever your light sources you let through a window now be mindful light is creating a whole picture we don't want that picture we just want signature of that photon 
and that's why you need to have this alert basically instead of creating an image you're just like hey don't give me the image just give me that like quote unquote one beam of light in that beam you will want to stretch it out because if you directly try to stretch out uh, basically the whole light again it can be stretched out but it will give you a very sloppy rainbow meaning the signature would be lost in it so you really need to narrow it down that's why the slit is very important in that then after that slit light will go through a splitter that splitter can be two of the primary thing either it could be a prism older days like how old as in like a same old as uh, basically Newton age and then you have a uh, grating uh, systems basically diffraction grating now this is a much more modern option and you can have this in your home in terms of CD DVDs they have this and uh, you can buy also that I have also ordered uh, some of them once uh, I will arrive I'll talk more about that so you have diffraction grating now after this you try, uh, try to study the spectrum in using a sensor now this sensor will uh, not only give you the basically uh, which colors are there it will also give you intensity after plotting that you can be like hey it is missing like for example this is an incandescent very smooth black body radiation butter then you have cfl very harsh harsh lines which you, that's why people hate the incandescent uh, basically cfl light output for that reason it has that harsh light to it led also has its own unique signature which people are working their ass off trying to correct some companies are trying to have a red led peak so it has a bit more balanced output and some companies are working into looking into making purple leds rather than blue leds so that purple creates a you know boatload of photons that photons goes into lower energy state so you have much more pleasing output again those are not very common yet so that's the build and you can build it yourself and many scenarios is actually advisable to build yourself because this sort of equipment is not mass produced to a point where you're like you can just buy it they're very expensive like very expensive and you can build quality instrument i'm not talking like you know ah, i barely works no i'm like talking about like seriously quality instrument can be built in home people have built it with a raspberry pi people have built it with the old webcam webcam which i want to try uh, in the future and not to mention even a very cheap sensor nowadays is really good and if you can remove the infrared filter from it it can even show you very wide spectrum basically from a little bit of ultraviolet and lot of infrared you can you know absorb a lot of information and which is very important especially if you are working with lasers because many lasers use infrared pumping so you need to if you need to know that uh, whether your laser has a filter that is stopping infrared from leaving you need to check it how do you check it you build this sort of instrument i mean like you can buy it but good luck unless you have a boatload of money in your trucks so that's the build behind it it's a rather simple device now what are the uses of this sort of puppy Board load of study meaning this is one of those tool if I say properly like almost every aspect of your personal life has been touched by this one way or the another e even if not directly the tools that made those tools that made your tools have gone through this one way or the another and especially when you're talking about light flat out this is the only way we could study light so we had to develop this and I'm talking like very old prism based uh, manuals equipments that have been made years ago I mean like centuries ago at this point in time that's the only way we can study light and con quality control it for example when you're talking about like uh, CRI it's really not that good when you're talking about all other system it's really not good so what people are doing right now is going to spectral similarity index meaning they're just taking incandescent which is the best known light source in terms of uh, you know spectrum output they look at the spectrum output and then compare it to other outputs meaning if you have led it will show you like how spiky or how smooth it is basically we want smooth and we want balanced that's what we want and you can just compare it that if uh, spectrum similarity index is good meaning your light source is good meaning if you are getting poor color rendition your camera is broke or you broke so in those sort of scenarios that's the only way we can get true high quality understanding of lights then we come to lasers lasers require this sort of instrument because many times uh, making high quality lasers are very expensive so what do people do is they build cheap lasers which are like uh, let's say infrared lasers how cheap because the first cd was based on infrared because that's how cheap it is to make uh, then we started to go higher like red laser started to come appear in dvd and then blue lasers started to appear in blu rays so you get the point Infra uh, infrared lasers are very cheap then we make infrared laser and then we put a pumping medium in front of that that pumps that uh, basically photon into higher energy now awesome super cheap you can buy that uh, you know in your local store consequence unless they have a quality infrared filter your laser output also has infrared which is really bad for well, your eyes so you get that point for the laser industry it has to be there that's the only way they can calibrate it that's how they can test it they can understand everything that they need to understand material testing for example gemstones at this point in time we are really really good at making gemstones and we are really good at making gemstones that are very low quality but appears to human eye quality so in those sort of scenario send it through a spectrum and like Haha, i see we you have used this much chromium this is the mix of it we know the quality of it and again it is be mindful this sort of spectrum system is not very good at 
it telling you artificial or natural reason is not that like you know uh, cheaters have become good it's like engineers have become really good it's like at the end of the day diamond is diamond is a diamond meaning it's a carbon lattice if the carbon lattice is really good really really good it does not matter whether it's made it's made in core of the earth or made in a lab we became really good at it basically we are as uh, on a molecular level we are becoming very good at it so nowadays like you know uh, artificial equipments are really good but again we still have lower quality parts and high quality parts how do you test it spectrum graph so a lot of material including metal testing also um, sometimes people take a very small chunks of metal uh, you know turn into plasma creates light spectrum can be analyzed because you have to understand metals are alloys meaning a lot of things are mixed based on the ratio you can have a metal that's like super strong or you can have a metal that is super strong but the moment temperature drops let's say below 40 degrees celsius it's poof so things of that nature requires good quality control and you want to use as many tools as possible you don't only want to rely on let's say conduction you don't only rely need to rely on like let's say sample testing of one time you want as many tools as possible to be damn sure that i build this dam and it's going to be damn here so you get that point like material testing requires a lot of it liquid testing in biological labs biology labs rely on this address i provided a uh, individual's video who made quite amazing system and he was uh, looking at from a biologist point of view reality is when you are building with concentration salts solutions things of this nature it's very difficult to test it's like how the heck are you going to test it so the easiest way is like you know test how it's absorbed reacting with light and again you must have noticed people uh, talk a lot in biology about bioluminescence bio, uh, biofluorescence meaning it absorbs light it re emits it in different spectrum in all those things how do you deal with that well you have to build a spectrograph in order to study that light now you have to create a calibration sphere basically 10 percent solution should look like this 20 percent look like 30 50 60 70 80 90 100 and then you're like okay now i have this solution which i need to test and then you plot it back again so that's why this sort of instruments are priceless at this point in time all quality biology lab meaning entirety of pandemic research every lab that is serious they must have had one or two of these puppy so this is very important in chemistry it's like everything chemistry is like if you want to understand how high energy photons work or basically electron shells work you have to have this sort of puppy so it's one of those things it's like it's used everywhere now let's talk about most far-reaching uh, use of this puppy astronomy now this is the only tool that you can uh, put next to a telescope basically telescope allowed us to see this allowed us to understand what does this mean? This simply means if you're studying a star, it's almost like you got its social security number. It's like, I'm genuinely surprised how many things we can just study from this sort of things. It's like, oh, my, and this is this puppy is from James Webb Telescope. They spent a boatload of money trying to develop that because uh, you may be thinking, oh, it's just a camera sensor. Well, problem is that if you directly send an image through a prism, you just get overlapping uh, spectrum. It's black. You don't want that. That's why they had to develop this micro shutter array, meaning where they're like, okay, this is a star, this is a galaxy, this is a star, this is a galaxy. I don't want that. I already observed it. They will block it out. So then they can get clear lines, which they can study properly. So a lot of money had to spend into this shutter array and this sort of solar uh, spectrum analyzation have been used to study the sun and how its uh, elements are working. Basically, if you have ever seen uh, weird photos of the basically our sun, which looks very weird in terms of like different color, many times they are studying different elements. For example, how the oxygen concentration is there. That's why like you build a specific filter, specific instruments that gives you the spectrum graph and you can study on the like, this, 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 this spot. You create a graph out of it. So in terms of star, we can study its chemical composition because it's a black body radiator. It's radiating GG amounts of energy. No problem with that. Smooth spectrum, awesome. But after that, there is a sphere. That sphere, that atmosphere has elements, basically hydrogen, helium. Based on the percentage of this, you can estimate its age. Then you have uh, like other elements also. Basically, if it's a light star, basically light in terms of temperature, you can find out like it has heavier molecules in its upper atmosphere, which you will never find in uh, you know bright blue stars. Blue star will be like only hydrogen or helium at best case scenario so in this sort of chemical composition study if you put a, enough time into it enough uh, research into that you will be figure out everything then we have temperature that's super easy and in terms of density because if it's very sloppy meaning the uh, lines that you are getting from the spectrum it's very sloppy that simply means that atmosphere is like very very dense it's like a lot of absorptions are happening a lot of uh, you know photon emission and re-emission absorption and remissions so it's it will create a sloppy signal but when you're getting clean signal you know for a fact that star is like you know the atmosphere of the star is very very 
pristine so that gives you a very good understanding of its density then you are talking about translation this puppy is coming close to us or going away from us uh, that's a red shifting and blue shift how do you know that star is not red or blue but because of the uh, signature the signature has a pattern that pattern if it's the whole pattern is like let's say hydrogen alpha line that whole pattern is like going to red you're like yeah this is red shifted not uh, you know the star is red that's how we know so translation we also figure out and because of the star size stars are huge i mean ludicrously huge in those sort of scenario when it's spinning it's literally the lines will literally move back and forth like this because like one part of the sun is coming closer to you another part is coming away from you it's like one side is away another side is towards you that will create a movement that our modern sensors can detect it's like how is it doing that it's like that's your rpm so we can do surprisingly lot with this sort of instrument and any uh, modern observatory that we are talking about is like most of the money is just going into this this puppy basically they call it 3d spectrograph meaning we can study whole sky like at this point in time there are some uh, proposed instrument that will go into giant melodrama telescopes and things of that nature where it's like every star that i'm seeing i'm gonna study all those stars at the same goddamn time so be mindful this is the only instrument that actually allows us to understand telescope gg this is like we got had the telescope but we like we are looking at things now we are seeing things we can understand things and if you ever heard it's like how do we know what is in the jupiter's moon or like you know what's the atmosphere made out of spectrograph how do we know like what what is the atmosphere of a distant planet exoplanet this puppy so that's why this instrument is one of the most important instrument in astronomy after telescope and i'm like again this is the eye of a telescope so this was my presentation on spectrograph. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Uh, I would also urge you to leave a comment because I do try my best to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.